You told me you were trans. You've been eating out for two months and had no idea. You're wow. not gay. <gasps> Happy Pride, Mom. Let's talk about my pronouns. So I use... Let's not. Moving on. Race is a human invention or construct. If you have a problem with someone's fat body, that's not the person's problem. You're just pitiful. Grandma. This is how I know your grandkids don't love you. Being misgendered can be an incredibly painful experience. Gender, and it's and it's and now our favorite segment reacting to woke TikToks. I know I usually come in here raw dogging it. No protection, but I have in fact come today with my weapon of choice. Happy Pride Month. Let's talk about my pronouns. So I use... Let's not. Moving on. Good afternoon. If you're a Republican voter, I want you to listen real close. I sincerely hope that someone who you can't live without, who your life would fall apart if that person disappeared off the face of the earth. If you're a Republican voter, if you are a die-hard GOP voter, I sincerely hope the person you love most gets a surprise attack of diabetes. That was a bit specific. One of y'all needs to come get your grandma. Grandma's gone goofy again. She's off them bath salts. Her hair's blue. She's wearing cheetah. And she's wishing death upon people in her car. And I know that y'all have talked about the fact that she is not capable and fit to drive. That license, I know, has been taken away for a few months. I just have to say it again. Just like earlier in the video when I said, be thankful that you are not a liberal because this is some hate living in you that I couldn't, I can't relate to having that inside of me, baby. And so she's saying diabetes because it's about, you know, things being covered by insurance or whatever. I want to know, is your life alert covered by insurance? Because frankly, you're on the cusp and also you're already dead on the inside. Right. So that death of your spirit has already occurred. And I can only imagine that due to living in this current state of disheveled hatred is probably going to lead to that actual death relatively soon. Not wishing that upon you because I'm not you, baby. I'm not a demon, but I will advise against deciding to live with this sort of hatred in your heart because you're just pitiful. Grandma. This is how I know your grandkids don't love you because literally if my grandmother logged on to any app and ran her mouth looking like this, first of all, I mean, that alone I would call like grandma, the blue hair and the cheetah print, it's not giving what you think it is. And as your loving grandchild, stop. On today's episode of is it a microaggression or is a white lady just being nice? A coworker says to me, you're running this meeting very well. Mind you, the person who was supposed to run the meeting didn't come. So it could have just been a nice compliment. What do y'all think? One thing I've noticed since really like including racial woke TikToks in the lineup here with you guys is that the things they complain about are just wild. And they're very indicative of the fact that, you know, some of y'all hang on to hatred and racism as a crutch, right? Like every part of you desperately wants to believe that it surrounds you everywhere you go, right? Because that's your religion. But if you have to ask, was she being racist or just being nice as if those aren't completely polar opposite ends of the spectrum and how if you're one of them, you're actually not even close to the other one, right? I mean, my God, if someone put a gun to my head and said, make that make sense, her TikTok, I would have to say my goodbyes. She already f***ed it up. Everything f***ed up. Ain't no making sense of it. Bye. You told me you were trans. How yeah. often have you said that to someone and then they're like spatch, meaning like they're not into it? Disclosing it is is challenging when to do it. I usually wait until after the first date, yeah. but previously I lived stealth where it's like I would live as a cis woman. Mm. And I've had guys like eat me out and like have sex with me for like two months. And then I'm like, shit, I need to tell them That's because hilarious. they're catching feelings. And they'd be like, pissed off like, wait, am I gay? And I'm like, you've been eating me out for two months and had no idea. You're not gay. Oh. 
you're nasty. I mean, I guess there's no argument here, right? Pussy, pussy. Right, bro? This is really sick. On multiple levels. It, it is, you know, multi-tiered here. The first, and I just have to say this. If you don't know, there is this really big emphasis in the trans community. One of the, you know, really toxic elements of it, as if they mostly aren't all toxic, right? This one, though, is that this idea of, like, you can just let a guy, as Miss B just said, eat me out for two months. And that's not something, like, deeply immoral if you don't happen to tell them that, oh, I'm also, like, I'm trans. Like, I'm born a man. Like, listen. Some of y'all get carried away, right? Some of y'all are a little gone with the wind and will say that it's rape, right? I don't think it's rape, but I think it's about as close as you can get to rape without being rape. You're going to jail, baby. You're going to jail. The other really unhealthy element of this is I am so sick of people putting this emphasis in the trans community about like stealth and like living stealth and hooking up with guys and not telling them. It's talked about as a brag, right? Like, look how sickening I am. I can fucking whatever. Baby, you're putting your life in danger and then putting more trans women, younger ones, lives in danger by even preaching this is something that's even remotely okay. So let Auntie Blair tell you what's really going on. You do this, you're going to die. You're going to die. And even if you don't actually die, you might as well treat it as something that will lead to you dying. Because one of these days, and this is just in the numbers, right? Trans people... Trans women who get murdered, the media will have you believe that it's a bunch of KKK mothers walking around and that's who's really offing the girls, right? No. The girls are getting offed by their dudes. The girls are getting offed by men that they are having sex with and letting him eat me out for two months. And then they find out and they snap, crackle, and pop on your ass. And that's not right. They shouldn't have snap, crackle, popped on your ass, but they did. And they should go to jail for that too because there's no justification for murder. However, there are ways to avoid um, that specific, really unfortunate um, destiny that both of y'all would come upon, right? Like maybe just being secure with yourself and being like, I'm trans on the first date. Or over DMs or texts before you even meet up, right? Like we're in an age of technology. There is no reason to even struggle internally with when do I tell him um, a text now? Five minutes ago, like probably would have been the correct timing. It's not really a big question for me, at least. I mean, and also it's seen as some sort of like badge of honor if you can hook up with or even in some cases it's really horrific date or marry men and never tell them. Baby, I swear to God, I know y'all have it so backwards and Blair White's the insecure one, right? Blair White's the one that hates herself. Meanwhile, y'all are the ones that can't even admit you're trans to people that you are interested in dating and or having sex with because you are so scared that they are going to hate you and be disgusted with you because that's how you feel about yourself. And it's unfortunate. But all that double speak and that gaslighting and that manipulation that y'all use to say that the one who admits that she's trans and doesn't give a f is probably the one that's insecure and hates herself. It's backwards. Backwards. Why would you even ever want to be with someone who doesn't know and love you for everything that you are. That's why I never understood the whole like tranny chaser discourse. It's like, oh, you mean he's like attracted to what you are? And that's bad, why? Probably because you think it's bad, right? You think you being trans is bad and you're disgusting. That's what you think about yourself. So you're putting that on other people who engage with you. And you are so not confident that people will engage with you when they know what you really are. That you're willing to... Let him eat you out for two months. You sick b See, you're so focused on getting head that you haven't had your head checked. Sad. The most unironic way is I hate America so much. The quality of life is so bad that I'd be willing to commit treason for free. I'd be giving away government secrets like it's a Black Friday deal. You know, my little jingle would be, it's the season for some treason. I would do anything to get out of this country. Anything? Anything. Except actually leave, right? Because you're free to go anytime. We have that freedom thing here. So you are free to move, free to leave, free to fuck off. Y'all love making threats of your absence as if anyone would miss you at all. Who is going to miss you, baldy? Head looking like split pea soup. Small head, bald head. Who's going to miss you? 
Humpty Dumpty, looking like an egghead. And I just feel like we have enough of those. So bye. Remember when we lost all of our American celebrities during the 2016 election? Oh, no, they didn't leave. Y'all love it here. I mean, if you're so upset about life in the country that gives you that iPhone to run that mouth on, maybe move to the countries where they're building the iPhones. See how those are. Race is a human invention or construct created specifically to justify the colonization, displacement, and dehumanization of anyone deemed subhuman by European colonizers. We are categorized according to race or racialized. Science shows us that race is not biological or genetic, and history shows us that race was invented and reinforced over the past 600 years. A subject. Y'all will just say anything. Can we talk about your references here? Chapter 5 of an untitled book that says get smarter about racism and all the other text is blurred out. That's your, that's your, that's your evidence. Those are your receipts. And I have to say, apparently her name is Blair Amani. You are bringing disgrace to the name Blair. Blair is a beautiful name. Do not play with my name. When's the last time you even heard of a name Blair? Only a few select icons in history are named Blair. We're talking Blair White. We're talking Blair from Gossip Girl. We're talking the Blair Witch Project. She was a demon, but she created a genre, baby. Just like me. Not the demon part, but the creating a genre part, you know. Y'all are so hung up on social constructs. It's your favorite term. Such and such is socially constructed, therefore it doesn't matter. As if something socially constructed is not actually constructed by nature as well. You're also very self-centered. So the entire concept of race was invented just to subjugate you to demonize people who you think look like you. I mean, that's a level of self-centered narcissism that I just, it's almost as mind-blowing as you having the name Blair. And trust me, I'm fried about that. Everything I say about gender <laughs> is influenced by my whiteness, which is obvious, but there's an interest. I'm sorry, it's just like he's giving gay where's Waldo? Where's Waldo? Here. Freshly home from the gay pride parade. Interesting second part to this. The rejections of gender and gender roles that I create and embody will still come from my whiteness. Those acceptable to my constructions of self as a white person. I will likely uphold and encourage white beauty standards and see and more immediately accept other white rejections of gender. Essentially, even the most cr Then how am I the problem? The woke white saviors, sometimes I struggle to even include them in the lineup for the woke TikToks because they're just so simple, right? They're just giving simpleton. They sit up here and admit to themselves and to their viewers that they are the problem, but still gaslight you into thinking that you're also the problem. He's like, I will uphold white beauty standards. Okay. Love that for you. I don't do that. I pick from a little bit of everything. I think each race has beautiful things about them. I really do. I don't think that only one race has, you know, a monopoly on beauty. Like I pick and pull from everywhere. 31 flavors, Baskin Robbins, however many the hell they have. Like, you know, I may dress like Chun-Li in a podcast episode because I am 1% Asian, by the way. And so, I don't know, every 99 outfits, there may be one Asian adjacent one. You know, it's beautiful Latina is high. I get spray tanned. And I even have Latina in me, but I wasn't lucky enough to get the skin tone, right? Because I do believe that's a beautiful skin tone. And it's not that the white girls don't have beauty because they do. Everyone's trying to copy their hair. Even y'all who sit up here and act like they're the devil. A lot of y'all have pieces on that look just like theirs, right? This is Indian Remy, baby. This was, you know, we're going to hopefully believe not forcefully taken from a beautiful Indian woman. But again, I'm, I'm wearing different races on me, so... Guess we found Waldo, fresh off that West Hollywood bender, right? Crack still in his veins and just letting it loose all over TikTok. Sick. Sick. I'm a doctor and apparently the state of Texas needs to reconsider what it considers child abuse. Because you know what's abusive? Ignoring the needs of your child when your child is telling you what they need. And engaging in behavior as a parent that could lead them to unalive themselves. Over 80% of trans youth have admitted to having thoughts about unaliving themselves and over 50% have actually attempted it. I mean, that's really scary. I've actually never had one. 
until now. Talking about we need to reestablish what we think of as abuse, we need to reestablish what we think of as doctors because if I walked in the ER, I'm talking like a sprained ankle. It could be minor. I would run to the hills. Iron Maiden from this. And yet she's cutting kids off. Y'all are trusting rainbow hair with your child's genitals and letting her gaslight you into thinking it's abusive not to remove them beyond. I'm not saying that every doctor should be in like impeccable shape, right? Like I don't need to see necessarily a doctor with a six pack and glowing, you know what I mean? But like there's also levels to it, right? Like she shouldn't also be decrepit like this. This is straight decrepit. And if she didn't have that color in her hair, and if it was just that one tone gray, which you know it is underneath, this would be a corpse telling you to abuse your children, otherwise known as a straight demon, because a corpse shouldn't speak. A corpse should sit there and be silent. And here you are running your mouth. That mouth is abusive. I'm seeing a lot of queer white people posting it like, like posting themselves being really happy and doing some random shit and being like yeah our joy is resistance and like in my opinion white people's joy is not resistance like queer or not your joy is not resistance matter of fact your joy is what got us here in the first place like your joy is why we're having to resist and like y'all putting yourselves and finding yourselves and like your own joy in front of everybody else is what got us here like literally i'm seeing so many white people right now going on like organizer retreats and posting about their joy and how awesome it was honestly i want to see more of y'all like sitting your ass at home and giving your money to black and brown people so they can do that sh oh bye oh my brain cells were just leaving Hold on. bye didn't i just say that the thing that racial activists now oppose is happiness joy speaking Races getting along, people not being miserable. This is just, this is the most unhealthy person. And you see the oppression Olympics, right? That totem pole, the white queer people are below like queer people who aren't white. It's like that totem pole, that ladder they think is leading them to heaven when it's actually taking them to hell, right? And that's a self-created hell. I'm not even talking about how you're going to burn an actual hell with Satan, right? Like maybe, probably. But aside from that, you're choosing to live in hell on earth. Being offended and upset when you see joy. That's sad, but call that your own poor mental health, not anyone else's problem. Hey, so we're having a real debate right here. I am non-binary. I am a non-binary woman. I have a vagina owner and my husband tells me consistently that he is a cis man that likes vagina. And that's how he identifies, as a straight, cis man. I find it offensive that my husband sees himself as straight when he's married to someone who is non-binary. I hope that regardless of who he's married to, unfortunately you, he has a motherfucking prenup. Greg, Tom, whoever you are out there, please tell me you have a prenup because this woman will take you for everything you're worth. She's already taking your joy. She's already taking your mental health. Next up is that coin. You see how it's never actually just about accepting them? Like they will not only change what they think is changing their own sexuality or gender or whatever. They want to change yours along with them. They're taking you along for the ride like Lana Del Rey. They're taking you along, babe. And unfortunately... You have one of two options, Greg, Tom, whoever you are out there, Bennett. You need to divorce her. Now, did you know you can actually get a prenup while you're actually married and that it holds more weight than doing it beforehand? If you can get this trick to sign a prenup, well, it's not called that, but sign the mid-marriage nup or whatever, the court's going to take it more seriously than a prenup. Y'all need to stop taking the non-binary label and just accept what it really is, which is you're ugly. It's okay. And here's the thing. When I call people ugly, I'm always mostly talking about, you know, the inside, but the outside sometimes too. But that's all something you can work on, baby. It's not like you're ugly and you're sentenced to ugly. I actually don't think anyone is permanently ugly. I think everyone has beautiful things about them with some 
it's a bit harder to uh, find, right? Like a needle in a haystack. But if you find it, you can turn it up and you can get better looking, right? So sometimes I think people get so offended when you call people ugly because they think that you're, you know, invoking some sort of like permanent state. No, you can you can become better. And I hope you do after this marriage because Bennett, get rid of her, but get that mid-marriage nut. If you have a problem with someone's fat body, because that's what it is, it's fat, um, overspilling it into your seat, that's not the person's problem, okay? It's the airline's problem because that's who you're paying your money for. It means they're not an inclusive company. They're not including people of different sizes. So if it's affecting you, think how much it's affecting that person. I'm definitely feeling affected. You know, that you clocked accurately. You know, just like that whole airplane seat thing isn't working out for you. Running that mouth publicly is really not working out. And I need you to question who led you to believe that you had anything interesting to say. Anything remotely worth taking seriously to say. Baby, pay for that second seat and stop talking. Just stop talking. And just go on Ozempic. And I'm actually not saying that to sound mean because guess who's on Ozempic? Hi, I started it. And I have no shame in that. Y'all think I would get everything else done but not I have a moral high ground against Ozempic? I really don't. And uh, we're just going to accept that you don't have to be fat anymore. Science figured it out. You don't have to make this misery your identity. You don't have to self-harm. Get Ozempic and lose some fucking weight. There is nothing to be ashamed about in that. I'm on it. And a lot of other things. You don't got to be a queer Snorlax for the rest of your life. You can step into the light. I am a non-binary middle school special education teacher. And only my two paraprofessionals know that I'm non-binary. Because that's not like a conversation I want to have. with. Because they couldn't tell by looking at you? You are non-binary TM, baby girl, baby boy, baby they. You are what they would put in the dictionary as non-binary. Synonym, demented, you. I cannot believe you're working with special needs children. I mean, that's just straight abuse. That's disgusting. As if infiltrating the regular classrooms like y'all do and psyoping these babies wasn't your big one. You got to go into the special needs class with parents and admin right now. Anyway, one of my students said that I was a beautiful king the other day and that was just so affirming. Why does it look like you got wet? What is that face? Leave the special needs babies alone. Do they not have enough problems? You just wanted to step in that door and say, hey, can I be your next problem? Like, get away from that. And I'm sorry to tell you, he did lie to you. He lied to you. In fact, he lied to you several times and told you you were fly, hot, sexy, beautiful, and you're nothing like that. You're nothing of the sort. Affirming. It gave me the gender euphoria. Have a good day. Do you see why I don't, even when I'm joking, I'm not running my mouth. I asked, did it make you wet? And here she is, the second we hit play. It gave me that euphoria. Maybe some of y'all need to do drugs. Maybe some of y'all actually need to just go get your euphoria from drugs. Because special needs kids, it's just not, you know, it's, it's just not good. You got to stop. You got to get away. You got to get fired. Stop hiring these teachers. I'm exhausted. So I got to go probably to church after all that. Um, I love you. Follow me on this channel as well as my main channel. Follow me on X and Instagram. And I'll see you in the next episode of The Boy White Project. Bye.